tavern? Uh, has a tavern. Visit the tavern. Ah, there. Very good. Uh, let's uh, speak with the barkeeper. The tavern is well frequented. There are only a few stools empty at the bar. The tavern keeper is busy serving his customers. You sit down. The tavern keeper asks, What can I get you, folks? Six stouts. The tavern keeper fills uh, some tankards with beer you ordered and puts it down in front of you with a hearty cheers. Thanks, and um. The tavern keeper doesn't give you another look, but turns to the other customers at the end at the bar. Every now and then he shoots you in, crying but guarded look. Sometime later he returns. Same again. Yes, and. Uh, the tavern keeper gets you the beer you ordered. Was there something else? Yes, sir. You know your way around here, don't you? Why, of course. Uh, what would you like to know? Oh, no. oh uh, nothing in particular. Well, I know a lot of stuff. For instance, hey, no visit to Torwall is complete without watching an Eoman match. But uh, I don't know whether that's any help to you, of course. Mm. Yes, it is. Well, I'm glad I could help, the tavern keeper says and turns away. A Thovalian with a war cord, and a heavy axe, and a signal horn at his belt enters the tavern. Hear ye, hear ye, Hetman Tronda Torbenson is looking for heroes willing and able to take upon them an adventurous, uh, a dangerous quest that may very well be the last they undertake, but which shall ensure them immortal glory and good rem remuneration should they succeed. The complete, to complete this quest, knowledge not only of swordsmanship, but also of sorcery is needed. Whoever believes they possess the skills and courage needed for this undertaking, see the Hetman in Torwall as soon as possible. A woman comes up to you. May I treat you a beer? Um, why, sure, any time, thanks. Hey, tavern keeper, beer for my friends and me. May I introduce myself? My name is Askra Arensdotter. I'm Rumrock, son of Rumrock. She tells you about this place. The most interesting thing she notes is there's a warlock living in the Black Finger who won't let anybody in. Hm. Well, pals, it's getting late. I've got to get home now. Nice meeting you, though. She bids you all a very friendly goodbye and leaves the tavern. It is still busy as market day inside the tavern. Maybe some customers have left, but some more have probably uh, come in just the same. It's hard to tell with all the hustle and bustle. Do you have another drink at the bar? Order something to eat? Or leave? I think we will leave uh, and we pay. And we pay one silver and two bronze. That's not very much. And we will go straight back in. We will go to the tavern again. Um, because uh, the flower master, while we drank, has uh, tried to amuse some folks with some uh, acrobatics. And uh, he can get them going and gets us five silver. <coughs> so now we will and explore some more. Here we have another temple of uh, Fex, uh, the god of thievery and stealth and pranks. Uh, maybe the flower master should give the god uh, what is due to him. A small part of the earnings just received. Uh, it's good in this game to stay on the good side of the gods. Um, 
Ah oh, yes, uh, the red sign uh, is uh, means that we can uh, travel from here on to some other city, but we are not yet ready, I think. Ooh. Alric uh, Garita steps in dark mass. Eh. I think he probably... Oh no, he has not lost charisma. Strange. Well... <laughs> Uh, yeah, a herb booth. Let's look what they have. Uh, potent magic potion. We have not even half of what it costs. <laughs> Shurimbulb poison. With a bit of luck, we can. Uh, we will later be able to uh, make these things ourselves. Ourselves. Mm, here we have Shurimbulb. Way more easy to get than uh, the amount of money we need for the poison itself. Uh, here we have Gulmond, and I think Gulmond is something to increase your strength. Belmar, or oh, is it Belmart? Hmm. I will look later. Um, yeah, we have not yet enough money for healing potions and magic potions. Healing potions, of course, give you uh, l uh, life points back, and uh, magic potions give you astral energy, um, which you then can use to cast new spells. Uh. Okay. Ah! High above the town rises the Hetman's otter skin, housing not only Hetman Trundus domicile, but also a barracks and the famous map library. Two muscled sentry, brandishing awe inspiring axes, stand guard at the heavy gates of the outer wall. Obviously, warriors of the head guards. What do you want? We came because of the appeal. Because of the appeal, is, is it? Well, let's see. Which appeal you mean? More imports of Bornland potatoes? Submissions for a vote at the Hyalding? Large weddings? Plan X? Heroes wanted. Uh, you don't look like peasants, traders, yarls, or specialists for Plan X. So, I guess you want to be heroes. <sighs> Alright, follow me. <coughs> Hetman Trondo. One of the guards leads you to the big longhouse where Hetman Tronde is brooding over some ancient maps, illuminated by a number of candles. After you've formally introduced yourselves, let's dispense with the formalities. So you think you can fight your way through the wilderness for months, trying to find something you know nothing about? Well then, that's courage for you. Right then. Torval is in terrible danger. The orcs are massing in the upper Bodia Valley, and it looks like they've united under it one chief this time. If the sages were correct in their predictions, it's going to be an army of thousands this time. We must prevent the orcs from reaching Vilmholm. If they do, the war is certain. I have studied the old legends and have reached the conclusion that we must try to dominate the orcs chieftain. The cowardice of the chieftain should be enough to make the entire orc army retreat. Magic would be best for that, of course, but you know how it is. If a sorcerer is incompetent, he's one of the other side. At this remark, Rani smirches slightly. So we have to resort to some other means. There's a weapon that was lost in the Orcish lands dozens of years ago. Grimring, the sword of the famous Hetman Hegelik, who led an expedition to the Orcish lands, but who unfortunately has never returned. His tomb must be somewhere in the enemy territory. And with it is uh, probably his sword as well. It is said 
that sword put the fear of the gods into the orcs and their shamans, or whatever they call the religious leaders. Orcs are supposed to have an excellent memory for stuff like that. If we could get our hands on that weapon, and some brave warrior were to display it to those orcs, preferably by hacking some of them to pieces, we'd be halfway home and dry. Either they'd disband, and then, the, then and there, or at the very least, they'd be so demoralized that we could push them back without much of an effort. So now you know the story. Do you still have the courage to go out and start looking? <coughs> um, some of our party will want to ask something, but uh, before they can, our uh, female uh, Thavalian will of course jump forth and say, I have one. Where do we start? As soon as possible. Get your bags packed, get supplies for the wilderness, and off you go. I'd be g it'd be a good idea to start by asking around. Some of the descendants of the expedition members are said to still be alive. As far as I know, there's even a direct descendant of Hygelix around. One Islaif Olgatson. Try your luck there uh, in Feldstein. Oh, I'm writing that down because uh, when I first found this, I was hoping that the um, journal would keep track of this stuff, but it does not. So, uh, try your luck there. And they throw us out again. Because they probably think we have the chance of an ice cube in the nether realms of hell. So, um, but uh, let's look around some more. Because I found you have to look at the normal uh, houses. You're standing in front of a windmill, a miracle of technology. Do you want to knock and visit the miller? Do we want to visit a miller? Why not? After a number of knocks, a heavy set man appears. Unless you've got uh, grain to grind, buzz off and stop keeping me from work. Okay. Another sack of rice falls over on Maras Khan. Uh, this joke is. To reach the Yaldingar Tower, you uh, would have to cross a natural stone bridge, a good 40 paces above the shore. But you do have a fantastic view of the Gulf of Prem above here as well. The tower rises another 20 paces up, and with its signal fire, it's sure to be a useful beacon from far and wide. Unfortunately, no one is answering your knocks, so you won't be able to travel out to the tower to experience the magnificent view across the sea. Too bad, because you've heard that on a clear day, you can see all the way to Preem. You can go no further in this direction. Oh yes, uh, there's no door. Uh, there's no door. Uh, 